In this video, you'll learn how to use TimeFlow to animate characters using existing animation clips and animator blend trees. To get started, we'll first create a new default scene. We'll want to make sure that the TimeFlow window is visible and docked in a convenient place. If not, you can open it from the main menu under Tools, TimeFlow, Open TimeFlow Window. Then click on the button, Add TimeFlow to this scene. Select the TimeFlow object and let's set the duration to 30 seconds. Then from the TimeFlow Examples folder, in Prefabs, Demo Content, select the test character and drag it into the scene, making it a child of TimeFlow. This character has already been configured with some animation clips on it for us to work with. If you're working with your own character or another asset, you'll need to first create and set up the animations on an animator controller. While TimeFlow can be used to sequence these animations, it is not really designed to create character animations from scratch. Before we proceed, let's adjust the camera position to move it a bit closer. And also rotate the character so it's facing the camera. And then click the Add Selected button to add the test character to the TimeFlow view. You'll notice that the character prefab already has an animation channel, which we can select and press the Delete key to remove it. Let's also right click and select Object, Reset Tracks to ensure that the track extends to the end of TimeFlow. There are two ways existing animations can be sequenced in TimeFlow, and we'll cover both methods. The first method, which is the simplest, is to play a specific animation clip directly. We can add a clip channel by right-clicking and selecting from the context menu, Add Animation, Clip, and then selecting from one of the listed animations. The clips listed are based on the animation states in the animator controller. Once added, you'll see the new channel has been added with a start and end keyframe. Let's expand the values column to better see how the values are being animated on each channel. Switching to the graph view, we can see this is simply a linear interpolation from 0 to 1, matching the original duration of the clip. We can play time flow to preview the animation. The animation can be sped up or slowed down by moving the keyframes. We can also switch the channel to Bezier mode to have more control over the playback rate. And we can even insert new keyframes if desired. The channel can also be looped to repeat the animation cycle. Another animation clip can be added on the same object by repeating the process of right-clicking to select Add Animation Clip and selecting a different one. However, you'll notice that only one animation clip plays at a time. This is presently a limitation of playing animation clips directly. Whichever channel is on top takes priority over the others. Using animation clips in this way works best when you have single discrete animations or can easily separate the clips in time. The next method we'll go over does allow animation blending by using the animator controller blend trees. For this example, let's select the test character and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. On the duplicate, select the animation channels and press delete to remove them. We'll also want to go into the inspector view and remove the animation clip script by right clicking on it and select remove component. We can hide the original character by clicking the visibility toggle. This time, we'll once again right-click on the test character and select Add Animation, but this time select Channel Animator. You'll notice that this displays each of the exposed parameters from the animator controller. If you don't see the parameters listed, this can be resolved by toggling the animator component on and off in the Inspector view, and then the parameters should now be available in the Context menu. Rather than animating the clips directly, this method uses triggers or numeric values to control the blend tree state, which is based on the logic you create using transitions in the blend tree. For example, we can select the Dance 1 parameter. This simply has an on or off state, which we can animate by inserting keyframes. To inspect this setup a bit further, we can select the transition going into Dance 1 and see that it uses the Dance 1 condition set to true to enter and the exit transition has a condition set to false. This means that whenever the dance one parameter value changes, it transitions into or out of the animation state. Also notice that the has exit time checkbox is off, meaning that the transition occurs immediately upon the parameter state change, rather than waiting for the animation to complete. 
and the duration of the transition is controlled by adjusting the handles here. Back in the time flow view, we can now right click to add animation, channel, animator, and select another parameter such as walk. This parameter is a float value, which we can animate the same as before, but adding a value of zero for off, no walking, and a value of one for walking. We can add as many parameters as desired and add keyframes to control the character animation. Note that the playback and transitions are handled by the animator controller. So time flow in this setup is simply triggering the animations to play based on the blend tree logic. The animations will not preview when scrubbing the timeline, so you'll want to rewind and let it play to preview the animation. It's also important to note that directly playing animation clips as covered at the beginning of the video cannot be combined with animator parameters since they are mutually exclusive. So it will be necessary for you to choose whichever approach works best for each situation. For more advanced setups using player input, it may be necessary to write custom scripts or create separate animator controllers in order to animate those characters in time flow. For a simple example, we can look at the animator blend trees scene included with the time flow examples. This scene demonstrates one-way character control can switch between player input and choreographed animation. To demonstrate, we can enter play mode and pressing any of the keys such as A for dance or T for T-pose to trigger those animations specifically. And then pressing the spacebar returns to the choreographed animation defined in time flow. That concludes this video on animating clips and animator blend trees. For more content on interactive time flow control, be sure to see the video on creating cutscenes.